I got, I'm doing a shout. I've got a shout to do. I've got some people around. Of course I do. You too. <laughs> Bless your heart. Wolf. Um, <laughs> On night last night, me and the boys had a cooler shaker. I was kites on snowballs. Absolutely fantastic <laughs> night, I had. Uh, yeah, oh, God, it's an amazing thing to show you. I mean, I've showed you my microwave before, right? And you think, yeah, so? We got microwaves. No, you ain't. Not like that, you ain't. This is a fantastic one. What you do, right, for instance, you get that, right? Place of meat. We've got some bacon, some uh, salami, some ham, and some tongue there, OK? And what you do is you open it up, right, and you, you put it in there like that. There you go. That goes in there, like that. Now, you press 2225655312, right? Now, that's got to cook, but this special button here, right? You press that, V, because say you've got some vegetarian friends and they come mincing round your flat, right? You've got to think, oh, no trouble, because you do that, look. And all that meat, there you go, all comes out like that. Beautiful salad. Look at that. <laughs> Absolutely, that's the height of Swiss technology. By the way, I'll just say that uh, I'm not saying that vegetarians mince, right? <laughs> yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hang on, just one other thing. Here's a photo. I was going through my loft, right? I've got a big loft. My loft is probably bigger than your house, right? <laughs> I've got this big loft, and I was going through. I reason up there, I was hiding, right? Because Sally Gunnell was banging on the windows trying to get in. <laughs> so I hid, <clears throat> right? The problem I have with Sally Gunnell, right, is I've got a stable door uh, in my kitchen <laughs> into, the, into the garden, and sometimes I leave the top bit open for ventilation, and it's, if there's only the bottom bit, she'll be in, she'll be over it. Like, <laughs> and in there bothering me. But this is a program I used to do. Remember uh, the professionals, CI5, right? They said, we want you to be Bodie. I said, no, I don't want to be... We want you to be Doyle. No, I don't want to be... So I played that part there. There you go. That was the old Scottish bloke. He's just telling me to do. That's a very, very happy day, that was. Uh, anyway, listen, I've got some stuff to show you from all these uh, millions of television programmes that I make. Uh, which I'll do in a minute. Uh, you're lucky to find me in, obviously, because normally I'll be uh, out and about. Oh, I've just been to my local news agents. I've just been here. You put a sign in the window if there's something you want, like uh, to rent out skips or to buy a Silver Cross pram or a bike, BMX, anything. You put the advert in here, and if anyone's got what you want, then they get in touch with you. Here's my advert here. I put up for what I want. <laughs> I'll just show you something, right? I just want to try this with you, right? Look, look at this. I want to show you something. All right? Who's this? Millsy, right? Who's that? Millsy. It's Millsy with a pair of glasses on, right? Yeah. So that whole Superman thing is bollocks, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right, here's another one of the programmes that I made, right? Uh, and this is, uh, uh, like, a crime show. I make a lot of crime shows, right? And here's something you might not know, right? The police, when the police come round your house, and, right, they, if they have to gain access, right, they have to gain entry, what they have is they have a couple of big, beefy blokes to kick the door down, right? But what if that don't work? Ah, well, they ain't beaten then. They ain't defeated then, cos they've got a special weapon. Someone who's specially trained, right, at Hendon Police Academy to employ uh, uh, another device. Have a look at that. On, Another team it. of officers experience no, a rather working. more hostile kick it one more reception. Time. No, it ain't working, so they brought him in. Right? <laughs> they brought him in, cos no door will keep him out. Have a look. Open the door! <laughs> <laughs> right, we've kicked it nicely. You've made us shout now. Open the door. Uh, here you go. Here's another one. Back at the first suspect's flat, officers make some surprising discoveries. So, what do you think that would be, surprising discoveries? Uh, drugs? Semtex? A cache of arms? No. No, ladies and gentlemen. Something even more sinister than that. Just, if you're too sensitive, don't watch this, what they found in this bloke's house. Suspicion of theft of that bollard, Brian. He's near the bollard. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty, indespicable <laughs> cad. Look at that. And now there's more. There's more. Watch. That sign on the back of your bed it says no ball game. Where'd that come from? The <laughs> board of the wall. Right? Yeah, you're also in the suspicion of theft of that sign. It's the Lancashire Harbour District Council. And the one out of the bathroom as well. You want to take the one out of the bathroom as well? <laughs> What's that all about? Is this the one in the bathroom? Yeah. Yeah. Take that as well. What, dumping in this area will result in prosecution? <laughs> 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 I 
Oh, you got a screwdriver, Brian. <laughs> Uh, here's, here's another chap now, and the reason I show a lot of the reason that we, sh we I show things on, on my program, all the programs I make, is have a bit of a laugh about them. But this is slightly different. This is this is to say, if you're out there and you think you're Jack the Lad and you're going to have a bit of a fight with someone, be be careful because the person you're fighting with might be might be a sensitive person, all right, and you might cause them, you know, terrible psychological damage. He's waiting there. He's gone in a chip shop, got some chips. He's got. A bottle in his hand when I've come round with my mates and he just whacked me over the head with a bottle and I've sort of like fell down sort of thing and he just kept on he grabbed hold of me out and just kept on punching me and I tried fighting back but all his mates were up there there's about three of us my brother got beat up the other night and he he, he was the one that done it because he beat my brother up my brother had a stress attack <laughs> I think it's funny <laughs> He beat his brother up and his brother had a stress attack. No, 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 no. With us, not laughter, right? <laughs> this man deserves your sympathy, right? At least he, he would have done if he hadn't blown it at the last minute by not being able to say, look, I'm a sensitive man, please help me, I've been hurt. He has to try, he has to try and be a hard knock right at the end. Monday. Right. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> over in a bottle. I'm not going to smash his head in. <laughs> no, you ain't. No, you might write him a poem, but that's about it, isn't it? Although, then again, you see, there's two sides to every one of them, because they find the bloke who did beat him up, and it turns out that he's got a very, very deep-seated psychological problem as well. Debbie and Mick found the suspect wandering the streets nearby and arrested him. Youth violence is a big problem for the Basildon officers. Do you want to speak to a solicitor at all? Are you currently receiving any medication? Are you currently receiving any medication? Well, he isn't, but he has got two problems, if you listen very carefully. One of them is asthma, and he's got another one as well. Asthma, that's all I've got. In fact, I've been locked up in closed rooms. <laughs> Well, that presents us with a bit of a problem, then. <laughs> Sarge, we're going to have to let this one go, I'm afraid. <laughs> Unless we've got a great big prison, like, 400 metres square with a skylight. No, I'm afraid we're going to have to let you go. Just one other thing that was on this is the fire brigade. And as you know, uh, well, you know my links with the fire brigade. You've seen me in uh, London's Burning, right? <laughs> I'm the hard one who used to be a boxer, and now he's, uh, he's a fireman like that. But he could still give you a good clout if you, if you weren't careful. Uh, and uh, here's, here's some firemen in action. But the firemen become alarmed when they discover there is more at stake than just records. There's a pet shop next door. Right, there's a pet shop and it's on fire. And the firemen, right, the bravest men and women in the world, I say firemen, I mean fire people, yo, right on. <laughs> the firemen and women uh, have to go in there right, and rescue these animals. Now, these are people whose ability to identify you in a smoke-filled room would be the difference between life and death. So their ability to see things in smoke is, is the most important part of their job. Here they are rescuing some animals. All right. Are these mice are still alive? <laughs> Mice are safe, that's all I can say. It's something I want to show you now. This is a program that I made. Uh, it's, it's set in um, it's set in Southend, which is a place you may or may not know. I don't know. Uh, it contains uh, several things, but one thing is this. It's about discipline of children, OK? Don't ever hit children, right? There is never any justification for hitting children. You must know, not, don't hit them around the head. Don't even give them a smack around the legs, all right? But if they're causing real trouble, mace. <laughs> Seriously, you mark my word. It's Saturday morning Quick and carnival. Oh, oh, the climax of the day is the torchlight procession. Oh, it wasn't really mace. What's the matter with you? These are all people in a fancy dress parade. Look, you know. The morning is devoted to Soldier. the children's keenly contested fancy dress competition. Julian Clary. <laughs> Abba. <laughs> While the focus of attention is on the children, the parents are never too far behind. There you go. 
Alan Jones has been entering his children for the mini float competition for the past 18 years. <laughs> 18 years? That's got to be classed as cruelty to children. For the last 18 years, they dreaded that terrible bank holiday Monday when they woke up. Daddy's building a float again. <laughs> anyway, here he is. He hasn't been beaten in the last five. Hasn't been beaten for it's five a years. This morning for children. It's about 11 different classes. We're in a class which is called a push and pull class, small float class. <coughs> Who else is taking part? We don't know until the actual day when they turn up. How do you rate your chances? We've had good chances in the past. You know, the last, last few years we've come first every time, which you know, we're pleased about. It all helps, you know. So, Morale boosting as well when they do that. And Ian gets enjoyment out of it. <laughs> How much enjoyment is Ian going to get out of this? <laughs> That's how much enjoyment he's getting now, and I promise you, the boy's not even in costume yet. <laughs> all right? And the, but the other thing is, amazingly, the last five years, they've won it. They've beaten all comers, all the thousands of people that flock to this event. He's won it, so I think uh, enough respect just for that, basically. So, how would you consider yourself as favourites? I think so, yeah. So until, until they're actually judged with everybody else that turns up, you just don't know anyway. The class is traditionally not as keenly fought as some of the others, and so far there have been no other entries. <laughs> <laughs> of course you're going to win. You're the only Berku brothers turning up, aren't you? But don't forget what we said. Timmy gets a lot of pleasure out of it, because maybe some of his school friends are there, and they'll see him. It looks like him. the trophy will be heading to the Jones family for the sixth year in the trial. <laughs> Imagine the shame. Going into school the next day. <laughs> Timmy, saw you at the carnival with your dad. You look fantastic. Particularly like the big green leaves around you. Bless his little heart. This is, uh, this is the carnival. Uh, it's organised by a, a rather splendid man who operates from a, a, gigant a gigantic suite of offices in, uh, in South End. This is Carnival Headquarters for Procession Chairman Mike Steptoe. By day, Mike runs a garage, but the Carnival... No, by day, Mike does an act with an emu, doesn't he? Isn't that the guy? Anyway, let's have a look at him. The biggest day of his year. Over the next 12 hours, he'll walk around 10 miles and be in contact with his 20 volunteer stewards by radio. I rely on the people that work for me. Uh, I've got a very good crew. Uh, we've got radio communication, so if I'm needed in, as an emergency, Radios. I'm there. We've got, uh, obviously, police cover as well, so we can always use their systems as well. Um, so really, it's just a case that uh, if there is a problem, uh, I get a message through the radio and uh, I get there as quick as I can. They've got radios, they've got mobile phones, they've got satellite, global positioning satellites, keeping in touch with all his men on the ground. He's very much at the, at the cutting edge, at the forefront, uh, of advanced uh, computer laser radio technology. Greg? Greg, do you copy? <laughs> Greg, do you copy? <laughs> Greg, do you copy? The question you have to ask yourself at this point is where is Greg? Well, he must be on the other side of South End and there must be a mountain between him uh, and Mike. That's why the radio signals aren't getting through. Greg, do you copy? Tell him I'll deal with the coach. Greg! Greg! <laughs> He's across the street. Greg! <laughs> Here he is now, anyway, uh, about to organise the carnival. Halfway along the seafront, the procession has ground to a halt. Greg, can you copy me? <laughs> Greg, can you copy? No, Greg, I, can you copy me, please? Greg, I'm beginning to look like a bit of an idiot. <laughs> Will you copy me, please? We've got plenty more things to look at. I thought what, what we'll do now uh, is we'll go to the commercial break. Tony, can you copy? Go commercial break. <laughs> commercial break. We'll go to commercials now. Tony, can you copy? <laughs> Tony, do you copy? <laughs> Now, just imagine this scenario, if you will. You can see what's going on here. It's a nice little five-a-side football court. Now, imagine this. They're playing along quite happily. Ball comes over. Small boy, say about, about so big, picks up, takes it on his chest, 
pushes it in and he scored a goal. He scored a goal. Now that's fine. That's delightful, isn't it? Delightful television experience. But then what happens? He's here. He's so excited about that he scored the goal. He jumps up in delight. Now look at this here. <laughs> now imagine the kind of cranial injuries that's going to cause. As he, as he hurls himself up, yes! Bang! Smack on there. If he's got a very thin head, he could even wedge in. He could even wedge in so that Charlie or Ash or one of them would have to come probably with a, with a step ladder or a Simon Snorkel, so, and, and actually get him down from there. This is, this is meat and drug, meat and drink to us, this is in casualty, absolutely meat and drink. Fantastic location. <laughs> anyway, I want to show you another television program now, one of the many, many television programs I've been responsible for the years. This one uh, actually won an award, won the Golden Rose of Montreux. <laughs> which is uh, like the Golden Rose of Montreux, but it's pronounced Montreux. Like that. And uh, this was uh, the award for the television interview which had the most questions, uh, 327, and the least number of answers, uh, none at all. Uh, the quality is a little bit ropey, but that's because it is fast action on the move. Uh, basically what's happened is that my very good friend uh, Rob here has turned up at uh, Wimbledon's training ground to, to talk to, uh, well, Vinnie Jones first. Hi, Vinnie. It's uh, Rob Spratling from LWT, mate. Um, so, have I just asked you one or two questions? It won't be long. Uh, Got no comments. No. Okay. Um, what do you think about uh, people saying that you should be banned from football? Any, any opinion on that? What do you say to those people? A chance maybe to get back at Vinnie's saying nothing at all. Do, do, do you think that you are the most hated man in football, or, or do you refute those allegations? I have to say at this point, I think Rob is the bravest man in the world, <laughs> asking Vinny that particular question. If you listen, Vinny does say one thing, actually, and it's completely and utterly nonsense. Can you give us any comment on that, Vinny? Basically, we just want to give you a chance to just to get back at the people who've been uh, saying these things about you, so what, what do you think of that? Speak to me, boss. He'll tell you yeah. all the questions you want to know. Okay. <laughs> questions I think you'll find we're not short of at all, Vinny. <laughs> it's more answers that we're... Uh... Anyway, his um, boss is going to appear oh, now. Just that incident which happened the other week with Kevin Ratcliffe. Did, did, was it as bad as all the press made out? V Vinny's boss at this point, of course, was Bobby Gould uh, uh, when we did this. Bobby Gould, now manager of Wales, and, and acting here with the kind of dignity and gravitas that you would expect from a, a manager of an international football team elect. Was that as bad as the press minute? Here comes your boss Here's now. Here's Bobby. Who are you? I'm Rob Swanning from LWT. We're just uh, having a chat with Vinny. You're, you're not allowed Excuse to film me. here. This is private land. Excuse me, Bobby. Can you just you sit down? Um, can you just tell us about Vinny, Bobby? <laughs> Bobby, we just want to have a quick word. Go on, Rob. Ask him a question. <laughs> Go on, son. You ask a question. He'll answer. Bobby, is all right with you? Just have a quick word can with you about that. Get off the ground, please. Okay. Off Get the out. Ground. Get off the ground. Go on, what he's saying is you're not allowed to be What do you say go. to people who want Vinny banned from football? Do you, do, are you going to go along with that? Respect, respect what you say, but... You... Respect what you say? <laughs> <laughs> OK, Rob, I'm with you 100% on this one, sir. LWT, what do you think of people who are saying that? Yeah, respect what you say, Bobby, but... <laughs> He has been sent off four times in his career, hasn't he, Bobby? Do you think that Vinny should change his ways? <laughs> no, I'm here, Bobby. We're what here. What do you think of the incident last week with Kevin Ratcliffe? I mean, he did headbutt him, didn't he? <coughs> Respect what you say, Bobby, but, um... <laughs> well, obviously, a lot of problems here at Wimbledon. They're not... Only for you, Rob, really. They, they <laughs> seem fine. They're doing very well, basically. But... Prepared to talk to me, either Bobby or Vinny Jones. Um, Bobby said that he has, has called the police, but I think press do have a right to know whether he does plan to keep Vinny on or not. So basically, what's happened is they called the police, right? He's been called the most hated man in football. Ah, right. Now, and now enter this man, Bob the producer, who is about to tell, uh, I think, one of the finest lies that's ever been told in the history of television. People are saying he should be banned for life, and it's a, an opportunity perhaps to reply to some of these allegations. Camera's not rolling now, so... <laughs> um. Camera's not rolling. Uh, but basically, that's an old uh, TV trick. It's something we use all the time. You tell them the camera's not rolling, uh, you know, to try and get them to talk, right? You're tricking them. Basically, what happens in this is Bobby's not fooled for a moment, you'll see. He knows the camera's running because he understands the red light on the front means that it's on. <laughs> Rob, on the other hand, becomes awfully confused by this. People are saying he should be banned for life. And it's a, an opportunity, perhaps, to reply to some of these allegations. The camera's not rolling now, so... Oh, isn't it? 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was. <laughs> 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 Responsive from you and from and Billy at the club. Right now, now we reach. This is this is the point where it all goes very, very strange. Now, basically, uh, we decided. I was sitting in the van, staying out of it, and we said they're not going to say anything. They they're saying we call the police, get off, get off our land, get off our land. Maybe we should, maybe we should go, just go. And Bobby, in true Wimbledon style, has a complete change of tactic. Well, okay, let's go Sorry, I'm not leaving. Well, you are. <laughs> you can't stop leaving, mate. Excuse me. You are not leaving. Excuse no, me. I want you to stay now. Excuse me. You are not leaving. You are not leaving. I'm, on... I'm sorry. I've grown fond of you now, and I want to. <laughs> the police are on the. Okay. 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 Thanks. Excuse me, Bobby. <laughs> No, he's just shepherding him out to the byline. Can I have your name? Yeah, you can, actually. Okay. If you let me go, excuse me. He spent the last hour saying, I'm not from LWT. I'm not from LWT. I'm not from LWT. Right, what's your name? Can I just let me go? Can I just ask you Excuse me, if you let me go to my van, please. No, no, I want you to wait I'm quite happy to give you my name, but I want to go to wait until we've got the police here. The police are coming. Why would you wait for the police? Because I want to go to my van. This is none of your business. Why would you wait for the police? As Bobby says. I'm asking you some questions and I want some answers. What about your football team? Uh, it was at this point that Bobby, once again in true Wimbledon style, having gone one way, then gone the other, <laughs> came up with the ultimate tactic. He didn't want to keep them there by force, obviously, but if you've got a film crew on, on, on your grounds and you don't want them to leave, uh, how are they going to get away? In their van? What if their tyres were flat? <laughs> Boy, you weren't tying it up. Was, it's loose. You weren't tying it up loose. and leave it alone. It's loose, honest. I was just tying it up. It's like you're tying it up. It's just... Well, you've got mine in the world, haven't you? From Wimbledon to letting cars there. <laughs> anyway, look, I'd like to stay and chat with you forever, but, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Then I wouldn't have uh, Oasis banging on the door saying, All right, Billsy, you coming out or what? <laughs> right, and all them boys from Blur and all that, and uh, Louise, but they kicked out of Eternal, right? They're all going to be round here later, so I'm off to have a party. Speak to you soon. Cheers. <laughs> Bobby, just a quick word, Bobby. Um, it's been said that you are the least funny man in British comedy. Would you like to make a comment? Uh, Bobby, it's said that um, you are no longer funny, and, in fact, in your whole career, you've actually only been funny four times. Would you like to make a comment? Bobby, I think that, as a presenter of a comedy television show, you owe it to your audience to make a comment. Bobby, I respect you. The camera's no longer running. Bobby, I think you're being very silly. I'm giving you an opportunity now to tell the audience when are you going to be funny. OK, Bobby. Uh, Bobby doesn't seem to want to make any comment, so um, I think there's nothing more we can do here. You're not leaving. <laughs> you're not leaving. No, tell me your name. Tell no, me your name. When are you going to be funny? Tell me your name. No, you tell why won't you tell me your name? You tell me when you're going to be you, funny. Why won't you tell me your name? Why won't you tell me, why won't you tell me your name? Why won't you why tell won't me you you're, you're not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, listen, we've, I've got some stuff to show you from all these uh, millions of television programmes that I make, uh, which I'll do in a minute. Uh, you're lucky to find me in, obviously, because normally I'd be uh, out and about. Oh, I've just been to my local news agents. I've just been here. You put a sign in the window for something you want, like uh, to rent out skips or to buy a Silver Cross pram or a bike, BMX, anything. You put the advert in here, and if anyone's got what you want, then they get in touch with you. Here's my advert here. I'll put up for what I want. <laughs> I'll just show you something, right? I just want to try this with you, right? Look, look at this. I want to show you something. All right? Who's this? Millsy, right? Millsy. Who's Millsy. that? Millsy. 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 It's Millsy with a pair of glasses. <laughs> Welcome. All right, all right. All right, enough respect. Nothing. Yeah, later. 
No, I got, I'm doing a shot. I've got a shot to do. I've got some people around me. Of course I do. You too. <laughs> Bless your heart. Wolf. Um, <laughs> Well, night last night, me and the boys had a cooler shaker. I was kites on snowballs. Absolutely fantastic <laughs> night I had. Uh, yeah, oh, I've got this amazing thing to show you. I mean, I've showed you my microwave before, right? and you think, yes, yeah, so we got microwaves. No, you ain't. Not like that, you ain't. This is a fantastic one. What you do, right, for instance, you get that, right? Place of meat. We've got some bacon, some uh, salami, some ham, and some tongue there, okay? And what you do is you open it up, right, and you, you put it in there, like that. There you go. It goes in there. Uh, uh, now, you press 222565312, right? Now, that's got to cook, but this special button here, right, you press that, V, because say you've got some vegetarian friends and they come mincing round your flat, right? <laughs> well, no trouble, because you do that, look. And all that meat, there you go, all comes out like that, beautiful salad. Look at that. <laughs> Absolutely, that's the height of Swiss technology. Anyway, I'll just say that I'm not saying that vegetarians mince, right? <laughs> yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hang on, just one other thing. Here's a photo. I was going through my loft, right? I've got a big loft. My loft is probably bigger than your house, right? <laughs> I've got this big loft, and I was going through... I reason up there, I was hiding, right? Because Sally Gunnell was banging on the windows trying to get in. <laughs> so I hid, <clears throat> right? The problem I have with Sally Gunnell, right, is I've got a stable door uh, in my kitchen <laughs> into, the, into the garden, and sometimes I leave the top bit open for ventilation, and it's, if it's only the bottom bit, she'll be in, she'll be over it. Like, <laughs> and in there bothering me. But this is a program I used to do. Remember uh, the professionals, CI5, right? They said, we want you to be Bodie. I said, no, I don't want to be... We want you to be Doyle. No, I don't want to be... So I played that part there. There you go. That was the old Scottish bloke. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very, very happy day, that was.